In the digital era, it is important to be cognizant of lifestyle management and healthy behaviors. Today, I'll be discussing five parameters that will give you the edge by optimizing your health and productivity. Each of these five parameters start with the letter S. So the first parameter that I'll be discussing is sedentary behavior. Sedentary behavior and physical inactivity are among the leading modifiable risk factors for cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. This involves activities such as reading, computer usage, watching television, office work, prolonged sitting time, and cell phone usage, also known as screen time. Greater efforts at sedentary behavior and physical inactivity while promoting physical activity, exercise, and cardiorespiratory fitness are needed throughout the healthcare system, in which the burden of cardiometabolic diseases remain extremely high. With the hybrid form of working remotely or going into office, our physical activity can decrease while our sitting time may increase. This brings in the concept of NEAT, which is known as non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which involves activities such as washing, ironing, sweeping, and other domestic activities. Following exercise videos online are helpful as well as taking advantage of home-based workouts because these kinds of activities has been on the rise during the COVID-19 pandemic. If being active indoors is not enough, daily chores around the house or standing while working can reduce sedentary behavior and increase oxygen to the brain for sustained energy throughout the day. So the key message with this parameter is to move. Movement is essential for our bodies. The second parameter is stress. While we need to take our precautions and keep up to date with life around us, managing our stress levels in the digital era has never been more important. It is really challenging to switch off when there is so much information on our phones or devices. Meditation and breathing such as yoga or tai chi can be beneficial, as well as embracing more laughter during stressful periods. Stress has also been shown to be a silent time bomb for one's health. There is an overwhelming amount of evidence in the literature supporting the debilitating effects of stress on our immunity, our heart health, and the resilience factors that play a role in amplifying such effects. Constant stress has been linked to high activity in the brain, which is linked to processing emotions and an increased likelihood of developing a low immunity. The most fundamental lesson to learn when it comes to stress is why stress about a possible outcome when it has never occurred yet? Writing your stresses down as well as the worst case scenario on paper or even the outcome of that stressor allows us to be prepared if the worst had to happen. In addition, categorizing these stresses as low, medium or high allows us to manage the stresses better. So the key message with this parameter is don't just manage your stress, manage and prevent worst case scenarios from happening. This will allow you to reduce your stress and optimize your energy. The third parameter is sleep. We should be sleeping for at least seven hours per day. However, we should also be cautious of not sleeping too much, perhaps more than nine hours per day, as this can either cause a dull headache or the feeling of being lethargic, which may prevent us from being productive at work or in our life. Now, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, adults who sleep less than seven hours each night are more likely to say that they have had health problems, including a heart attack, asthma, depression, and a low immunity. This can also contribute to the risk of developing any form of viral diseases, including COVID-19. Additional evidence confirmed that sleep deprivation is also associated with hypertension, coronary artery disease, and type 2 diabetes. Increased sympathetic nervous system activity has considered to serve as a common pathophysiology in sleep deprivation in relation with these diseases. Now, persons with sleep apnea have been found to be at an increased risk for a number of cardiovascular diseases and a low immunity. It has also been found to be more common among these with disordered sleep compared to their peers or others without sleep abnormalities.
Adequate sleep time is especially a challenge for mothers. It is important that mothers plan their schedules accordingly to counteract sleep deficit as best as possible. In the current fourth industrial revolution, one way is to do voice dictation or even voice notes when communicating, or to even automate, delegate and outsource certain tasks online or even to freelancers. In addition, mothers can even include kids into their work if possible. And one thing that mothers need to realize is taking breaks or a nap is okay. It would be wrong for all of us to think that getting less than seven hours of sleep makes us a warrior. Power naps where possible of up to an hour or more can fill that void of less sleep during the night. So with sleep, the key message is ensure that you are getting at least seven hours of sleep at night. If you're not, you should try to make time for a power nap during the day. This brings us to our fourth parameter, and that is sugar or consuming added sugar. Whether there's a canteen or kitchen at work, or if you're working remotely in the comfort of your own home, these provide a further inclination to consume comfort foods or food that is filled with sugar. Especially during stressful events, many rely on sugary foods to curb that anxiety. Occupying yourself with your work, daily activities, or home-based workouts, and staying away from the kitchen most of the time can reduce those cravings and temptations. It is important to pay attention to these habits as it may cause one to reduce their productivity while working, but also increase weight, which can adversely affect one's energy while working. So the key message with this parameter is cut down on sugar as much as you can. While it's not within our control to avoid sugar completely because some foods may have them, the goal is to abstain from added sugar in our foods as much as possible. This brings us to the last parameter, and so the fifth parameter is smoking. Now, not all of us may smoke cigarettes. However, it has been shown that every one out of five deaths from heart disease is directly related to smoking. The nicotine in smoke has the following effects on the heart. It reduces how much oxygen the heart accumulates, it raises blood pressure, and number three, it speeds up the heart rate, and four, increases the likelihood of blood clots. These can lead to heart attacks or strokes that can negatively exacerbate the insides of the blood vessels throughout the body. Now, aside from the impact on the heart, as we know, smoking also has a detrimental effect on respiratory health and is also a risk for cancer. So the key message with this parameter is quitting cigarette smoking is not easy but one should gradually reduce the amount of smoking per day. The ultimate goal is to tune one's mindset so that you're in a position to achieve smoking cessation one step at a time. In summary, based on these five parameters that I've discussed, we can see that they are all interrelated. A culmination of these five parameters with adequate hygiene practices, work ergonomics and posture, priority management and energy management would improve our health, immunity and the way we work, whether it's in office, remote working or a hybrid of both. We should take the necessary steps in guiding one another on abstaining from added sugar intake, chronic stress, cigarette smoking, sleep decline or sleep deprivation and prolonged sitting time. There is no one size fits all approach. Individual variations exist among us, as well as with a few factors such as genetics, the environment we're in, and socioeconomic disparities that exist within each country. It is estimated that people's weight would increase and their risk factors for a variety of disease would be elevated by the year 2030. With the evolvement of modern day living, blockchain advances in finance and healthcare, as well as the fourth industrial revolution, mobility and other technological advances, now is a better time as ever to enhance our awareness and education surrounding these five parameters. Ultimately, these will give us the edge by optimizing our health and productivity in the digital era.